Okay, so in our previous video, we talked about interacting with users. Now, let's talk about how we would take that and we would put it into a script. So I'm going to start by creating a folder to hold my scripts. And I really recommend you do this, otherwise they end up in weird places. So I'm going to do set, look, well, I'm going to get into the right screen first. To change my location, it's set location. You can also use CD, which is a uh, alias for set location. But I'm just going to set location to C colon backslash. And from here, I'm going to create a new folder. So it's new item. And I'm going to say it's going to be type directory. And I'm going to give it a name of scripts. Yeah, I'll capitalize that. Okay, and now that should create a new directory for me with the name of scripts. Now obviously you can use git help on new item to discover more about how that works. But let me do a git child item and that will show me that I have a new folder called scripts. Okay, um, real quick, I just use git child item. In the command prompt, uh, prior to PowerShell the command was dir. And that actually still works. In Linux, the command is ls, and that works too. Those work because they are aliases for the get child item command. And note that this looks exactly like the get child item. It's not the standard Linux or Unix ls. It's not the standard command prompt dir. It's actually running get child item. And there is an alias for get child item. So I can find that using get alias and that will show me all of my aliases or I can use get alias and show me the definition of get child item. So this is which aliases will alias to get child item and there are three of them dir, ls, and gci. Now the other thing I can do is I can do a um, get alias and let's say I want to find the specific alias dir and it will tell me the alias name dir is uh, results to get child item. By the way you can create your own aliases using the command new alias. Um, we're not going to go into that at the moment but you can do it just so you know. So. I want to set location again. So I use the set location C colon backslash to move back to this location uh, to the root of C drive. Is there an alias for get child or set location? So I'm going to do get alias definition set location. And that tells me I actually have three of them CD, CHDIR, and SL. So I'm going to do cd space scripts, and that should put me in my scripts folder. And cd is an alias for set location, so it's the same as typing set location space scripts. Okay, um, now I'm here. I want to go through the process of writing an interactive script. Now I'm going to create the same script two different ways. Um, in this video we're going to do it as an interactive script. In the next video we're going to do it as a parameterized script. And it's going to be kind of a pointless script. It's going to add two numbers together. Which you could actually do without going through the whole process of writing a script. But I want to show you the process of doing this. So we're going to, uh, we need to create a text document. All a script is is a text file with a .ps1 extension. So from my scripts location, I'm going to issue the command notepad, and we're going to do add that. We're going to and let me make it official. Add dash num int. So add number interactively. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Cancel. Don't do that. .ps1. There we go. That'll make it a script file. All right. Notepad can't find it. Do you want to create a new file? Yes, I want to create a new file. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my commands in here one at a time. And I'm going to put my commands in in sequence and it will execute them in sequence. So I'm going to do write host, and I won't make it look official this time, write host. This script will add two numbers 
together. Now, I want to write host, and I just want to give a blank line. So I think if I do a write host and just hit enter, that'll do that for me. But I can kind of come out here and prove that this is going to work by issuing the command write host, and it looks like it's going to give me a blank line. It actually will, by the way. That'll work just fine. So this script will add two numbers together, then I'll give it a blank line, then I'm going to prompt the user. So I want read host enter the first number but remember if I just read host it won't actually store that number anywhere so I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna put a dollar sign num1 equals now I wanna see if that's actually going to work so I can select it and let's see if it'll let us copy and paste it out here and I can verify that my line's going to work. There you go. So I can, or same thing, I can take a line here and try to copy and paste it back in here. But it's a little easier for me to work this way. So let's do that same thing again. Dollar sign num2 equals read host, enter the second number. And then I am going to put those two together. So I'm going to do dollar sign SOL for solution equals dollar sign num1 plus dollar sign num2. And then write host. I want to give it a blank line. See if I can type. And then write Post. the answer is dollar sign SOL period period okay now let's see if this works I've created this so let me go to file save and then I'm gonna leave that open so I can come back in here and play with it a little bit but I need to make sure that I save it first because it doesn't auto save so from here I can do the get child item And I see that I have an add num int.ps1. So I can try to run that. Now there's actually going to be an issue here. So if I do add num int.ps1, it's going to say I can't do that. The term add num.ps1 is not recognized the name as a command left function or script file. Suggestion. The command was not found, but in the current location, there is a file by that name. Now, I'll skip the rest of it. What it's telling you is, as a security function, you can't just type the name of the PowerShell script and run it. Now, if it's in a designated script location, you're OK. But if it's not, and you're just trying to run it from here, then you need to specify the location. So what we do is period backslash add dash num int dot ps1 and now it executes this script will add two numbers together what's the first number three enter the second number six the answer is 36 okay that didn't work according to plan three plus six should be nine not 36 what the heck all right here's what's happening this is something you got to be aware of PowerShell will frequently try to determine when you enter a value, it will frequently determine that that is a text, not a number. So what it is, does is has, has text 3, text 6, add them together, or concatenate them, makes 3, 6. So what we do is we need to define these as integers. So I'm going to put square bracket int and you'll discover this in the help topic about variables square bracket int and that should define both of those as integers now so when we put in a value it should treat it as a number remember this doesn't take effect until I save it file save let me run my script again three six the answer is nine alright at this point 
our script is working. We have a relatively pointless but fully functional interactive script. So back to Notepad and I'm going to close it out. Okay, so the next step, and we're going to tackle this in the next video, is doing the same script but doing it as a parameterized script rather than an interactive script.